We are live from Queensboro as the Tigers welcome the BMCC Panthers alongside Joe Massey. I'm John Perez. Queensboro comes into this match 12 and 10 overall, 5 and 7 in the CUNY Athletic Conference. Meanwhile, for BMCC, losers of five straight, but still an above 500 record, 17 and 6 overall, 5 and 2 in the CUNY Athletic Conference. This is what many had been hoping would be a preview of a late rounds tournament matchup, and we're getting to see it here in Queens, Joe, with two teams that have high octane offenses as BMCC Absolutely. will win the opening tip. And it'll be Alex Humphreys who will give it off to Amir Davis. You know, BMCC's missing a really top scorer, but they have another one right behind them that is playing tonight. In the post, it's a Sean Adams, a turnaround jumper is off the mark. Well, it goes, but the travel will nullify it and keep it at 0-0 apiece. Meanwhile, for Queensboro, they're coming off a tough 85-84 loss at Hosto Saturday afternoon in the Bronx. It was a one-point loss that Queensboro felt that it could have made the difference in uh, a few categories. They could have come out of the Bronx with the win, but... Nonetheless, that was not the case as Keesaw McIntosh is off on a three. This leads Humphreys in the corner for a three. That won't go as the ball gets squirted out and it'll go into the hands of Mark Blair. Matthews, the three off the mark. And the Panthers control. Three ball from Karan Dublin. A sophomore out of Harlem, one of the better players in the CUNY Athletic Conference. And here in the community college uh, level, you get some very good talents coming in. So when you state these guys being a talent, they are. And uh, you might even see these guys pop up in a lower Division I program. You never know. Well, and, and if you look at four of the five starters for Queensboro, they're averaging double figures. This is a team that can put it up with the best of them. Jumper off the mark from Watson, but the cleanup underneath. That's Mark Blair, the freshman out of Rosedale. He gets the first bucket of the night as the both teams starting out a little cold here. Hassan, cash. Adams averaging 13.3 points a game, and he ties the contest to two apiece. McIntosh drives baseline, gets the roll. He saw McIntosh out of Brooklyn, went to Civil Rights High School. Game picked up right away. Hassan Adams to the cup, doesn't get the roll, collects his own miss, goes up with it, misses the bunny. There was some contact there. He doesn't go to the free throw line as there was no foul. And here comes Watson into the front court, skip pass. Back out to McIntosh, a three off the mark. Rebound Fleming. McIntosh, a few opportunities. Dublin, nice nifty move. Adams with the offhand as Adams has missed his first four shots. Fans loved that, or the bench loved it more than, even than the fans, that move that he made. Marcus Watson straight away. All the way to the hall, Marcus Watson's on the board. That was the classic guard move right there by Marcus Watson. First field goal. Yeah, he'd been averaging 10 and a half points over his last seven games. And he gives Queensboro a four point edge. Adams, the kick out to Dublin. Dublin and Watson, that's a good matchup. And Watson wins the battle, the rebound goes to McIntosh. Matthews steps into a jumper, not that time. Rebound Dublin as bodies go to the deck and we'll get a foul. As that's the first foul on Devin Matthews and the Tigers first of the half. Tigers putting more athletic ability on the floor than they have in several seasons. Talking to assistant coach Jaron Simpson, he wants them to play consistently 
you know, you're not going to you're not going to be in shame about that two point loss to Hostos. I mean, that's a tough team over there too. McIntosh gives it over to Blair, and the Southpaw drills the J. Well, Queens, Queensboro starting to find their mark here, out to an 8-2 lead. Dublin, behind the back, curls it up and in. Karan Dublin, the reigning CUNYAC player of the year. McIntosh, pull up, no. Rebound, Humphreys. Skip pass to Humphreys. He had 13 points against Queensboro when these two matched up in late November. Can't stick the three. Nice find underneath, but Blair's rejected. Pass deflected by Forrest Williams. And we'll get subs both ways. And Fast moving game here, John. Elijah Smith checks in along with Damani Forquarson for the Panthers. Three is good, Dublin's heating up. Don't let Dublin get hot. Coming off a 20.5 rebound, eight assist performance against Suffolk Community College. And showing us that nice jump shot there, right, Archer from the corner. Five minutes gone by, it's Watson. Off the window and in, Marcus Watson. Averaging 11 points a game. So Queensboro out to a three-point lead as BMCC works the ball around. Smith gives it up to Humphreys. Three to shoot. Humphreys lets it fly and hits. The floater. Humphreys getting through the defense that time, John, with a little dexterity. Uh, almost lost the dribble, picked it up on the other side. Marcus off the mark. Excuse me, Marcus Watson off the mark. Dublin, the finger roll. Dublin putting the team on his back. A really good move there, showing us he not only could shoot the jump shot, but made a pretty move to get to the basket. Gives BMCC the lead. And a travel. They're gonna come right back at you, even on the defensive end. It's a high intensity game. You have a log jam in the CUNY Conference uh, for the, uh, what is it, the third spot right, right now? You've got BMCC a five and two, Queensboro five and seven, Humphreys drills the three. BMCC on a 10-4 run. And here is Watson on the wing. The kick out to Matthews. And the three, not that time. Dublin snaps a pass to Smith for three, it's good. This BMCC team can shoot it from downtown, shooting at 40% from distance, the most in the CUNY Athletic Conference. Yeah, hot right now, and uh, pulling trigger really quickly, John, didn't even allow Queensboro to get set up. Wilson can't answer back on a three of his own. Dublin. 
Smith, straight on three, cash. It's raining threes for the Panthers. Queensboro calls a timeout as they'll talk it over. And everybody is taking a turn at knocking down that three, and it's 20 to 10. That three point shot can really build a lead in a hurry. Right there was Smith, as you said. Before that, it was Humphrey, and, uh, and they really have uh, shot the ball well. Blazing shooting here in this first half. Well, and Joe, one thing, too, they're getting good looks, too. They're not forcing anything. No, they're not. Wide open, good looks. And they're getting the ball up court quickly, and they're a really athletic team. And at one point, I think they were rated number eight in the country before they had an injury that has uh, hurt them because it was a guy who averaged uh, 28 points a game for them. I understand he scored 43 in a game this year. So we'll see how the Tigers respond. Down 10 at home with 11.56 to go in the first half. And that was Jarrell Fullerton. And if that fact is correct, which was related to me, that he scored 43, that is a major, major game that he had this year. As a grown man's 43. <laughs> but you could see how fast BMCC can go to the offense the way they're scoring tonight. Greensboro has to try to slow them down. Well, this is the third year under Tommy Guerin taking over for Nolan Adams, who was at BMCC forever. Now he's at York for three years. Tommy Guerin played for the Brooklyn College uh, team in the uh, senior college ranks under Steve Podias, and he was a nuts and bolts outside shooting player. You can see why they can shoot the outside shot. Not that time for Dublin. McIntosh gets rejected. Hassan Adams. BMCC will have Queensboro inbounded with 22 seconds to shoot. Nope. Up and under and a foul. Good work on the glass by the uh, Tigers, keeping it alive with their gold uniforms. 20 to 10 is the score. Last time I saw Tommy Guerin, he was a few pounds lighter, and he was playing in a game against York for the South Division title between York and Brooklyn. Tommy Guerin took a last-second three-point shot, could not hit it. That's the last time I saw him. I didn't get to see the final that year. Brooklyn beat York in the final. It always turns out that way, John. Yeah. You... Second free throw is good for Justin Wilson, who goes two for two at the free throw line. And what an addition Justin Wilson has been. He joined the team mid-January, and since then has been contributing to seven points a game off the bench. And that's what they're looking for on the Queensboro side. They want guys who can contribute. Up the floor and a lay-in. Boy, he got ahead of the defense in a hurry there. Jamel Jackson hasn't played since January 8th, but he gets the finger roll. Yeah, but Coach uh, Mengo went to him because he needs some spark, and they, they brought it off the bench now. Six-point game. Dublin can't connect on a three. Goes out of bounds. Tigers basketball. Now you're talking to uh, Teron Simpson, the former point guard here at Cardozo, across the street, and at your college. Played all his college basketball at in Queens. Spent 20 minutes talking about getting down the basics. We want ball players who execute. That's what we want. Uh, Queensboro's shown a good job over the past couple of minutes, and right away they get to the basket again and commit. The foul does BMCC. So that'll be the first on Hassan Adams. And this will bring Jamel Jackson to the line. Jackson has been very effective. Hung in the air that time. Missed the shot, though. Yeah, freshman out of Brooklyn Academy. A 63% free throw shooter. You love those Brooklyn players. They're very tough. Uh, he came in the game. He immediately changed it. Second free throw, no good. 
Midway through the first half, six point lead for BMCC. Well, and Garen has been getting a lot of local interest from Division Threes around the area, including the CUNY Athletic Conference, hoping that when players do max out their eligibility, it's good hustle from Rayvon Fleming, but it'll be Queensboro basketball. But it'll be interesting to see the where the playing career ends up for players on both of these sides uh, for Queensboro and BMCC beyond this year because QCC has a lot of talent, as does BMCC. Yeah, and you don't mind seeing some of them come to the CUNY Conference and uh, bolster the ranks there, but they can end up elsewhere. They can end up in a local Division II program. Watson, the fall away is pure. And the Panthers have seen enough. Garen calls a timeout as they'll talk it over. Well, they've answered the call, John. Uh, you know, they had a rough start. Actually, right off the start, about four minutes in, they were being thoroughly outplayed, and they were raining the threes, BMCC. And now they've rebounded, and they've taken control of the game. Yeah, six unanswered points for the Tigers. As they were able to cool off a red hot Panthers team that was throwing up everything and hitting from distance early on. So I, I guess you have to play defense at some point and, uh, and, and lean on that. But that last shot was a thing of beauty and the drive before was very nice. And now Queensboro will try to put on some pressure. Dublin receives the high pass and he'll give it off to Elijah Smith. Dublin was red hot before. Let's see if they try to go to him, get him free off the screens, but he is being shadowed like a hawk. Farkas an offensive foul. Ravon Forrest Williams drawing the charge. Well, Marcus Watson was all over the fella I talked about. He didn't give him breathing room, so they took the ball to the hoop, committed the offensive foul, back with Queensboro. BMCC in the zone, they'll shoot over it. And the three is good. Keyson McIntosh. It's a one-point game. That last foul going to Farkas in his first. Wow, McIntosh knocked that down like a pro. And it's taken away. Queensboro with a chance to take back the lead. Jackson loses it. Doubling comes out of the dust. Then he loses it. And Queensboro back in front after the basket by Marcus Watson. All hard work, John. They're putting the pressure on BMCC, coming up with the loose balls. Now they're going to double team again, try to get Humphreys in trouble. Skips a low pass to Adams. It'll be Adams and Forrest Williams. Adams 0 for 2 down low. Ball saved, then it goes right into the hands of McIntosh. McIntosh just stepped in front of that ball right at the right time. Jackson steps to do a three, he hits. It's been a first half of leapfrog and the Tigers are in front. Humphreys with the head fake. Floating shot goes. That'll end the drought. And a good move by Humphreys right there, faking his man. Tigers have been very tough on the inside. Humphreys made a little ball fake, took his man out, went to the hoop. We have a ball game here. It's 2-3 zone by BMCC. Fall away shot from Watson, no. Rebound goes to Fleming. This game being played at a very fast pace, too. As you know, the junior college games usually are. Dublin attacking the baseline, gives it back out to Humphreys. His jumper, no. You don't see in junior college a lot of setting up, a lot of working the ball. They want to get things done. Well, and how about that for Keyson McIntosh? Queensboro, in what only seemed like a few seconds ago, down 10, they lead it by five. It was all BMCC, John. Now BMCC on their heels, they're not sharp at all. 
And it's all Tigers. Humphreys a three, he gets fouled, and he will shoot three. Well, Carl Lamengo a little uh, about that foul because he wanted him to come out, get the hand in the face, but he, he said, you didn't have to make contact. He did. Humphreys will shoot him, three of them. Mumphreys, uh, Humphreys, a sophomore out of Maryville, Tennessee, joined the team in January of last year, and he yeah. started in eight of 15 games. But I'll tell you what, if he doesn't score more, he will be Mumphreys. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he's been scoring a lot. Yeah, he has. Uh, especially in the last game against the Bronx. Uh, 32 points, 5 rebounds in 45 minutes. That's a heck of a performance mm -hmm. right there. You can see why. He's a pretty technically sound. Turned the ball over one time. BMCC feeling the pressure a little from the Tigers, but those three free throws make it a two-point game. They bumped him. And that'll be the second personal on Adams. Mark Blair drew him out of position and then he bumped him with the body. And Tigers really making substitutions. Yeah, Justin, Justin Wilson yep. checks back in for Watson. Carl Mengo trying to keep everybody fresh because this looks like this game's going to go into the second half for sure. Whoa! McIntosh again. He can't miss from downtown. And that's his sweet spot on that right wing on the right side of the floor. He looks like a, a fella. There's a block going against the Tigers. He was moving. Uh, he did move into him. But, uh, McIntosh looks like a former player that I covered at Fordham, Tony McIntosh. I wonder if he's a relation to him, but same type of player. Goes at it, goes strong, and shoots the jump shot very well. Now you turn over here. Yeah, those guys in those me. days, John, they were all competing to go to the United States Basketball League, which is the new league. McIntosh misses on a three. Gets it back. Passes out to the wing, but we'll get a foul before the pass. Somebody might have held him. Do you have uh, any information on where McIntosh came from? I'll look into that. All right. Come halftime. Thank you. Oh, you, you actually don't because that, that is not readily available for everybody. Teardrop goes. That was a good that was a good handoff in there. Mark Blair having himself quite a rookie campaign. 16 points a game. Plays like that, no doubt. Uh, right on the money. 31-26. They're really overplaying right now on the defensive end, the Tigers. Adams gets foul, gets called for the offensive foul. That's his third. And he's going to have to go to the bench. And he's you one of the uh, Panthers with size, yeah. But they're going to bring a little bit of a sizable player in. Uh, but, Joe, here's the good. one thing. Adams has three fouls, and he's their big. Number 24 in blue. They didn't take him out. No, he's no. still in the game, and they have a sub waiting now. Maybe they're bringing in somebody with a little more quickness so he doesn't have to extend himself. But all right, big trip here for the Panthers, and they're going to be called on a moving screen right there. And now Adams will come off. As that's the second foul on Farquhar son. And for Queensboro, I'm sure you're a little upset that a foul was called only so that you can go at Adams again and possibly have him pick up his fourth personal foul. Well, a good move to take him out by Tommy Guerin. Matthews couldn't finish. Here's double in the kick out. Humphreys a three, short. Thirty-one twenty-five, six-point lead. Yeah. 
playing that zone, moving it outside on Queensboro. At three off the mark, the follow goes for Matthews. Timeout BMCC, they'll talk it over. Well, there was one point where Queensboro was being thoroughly outplayed and they were getting open looks at the basket BMCC. Since that time, John, no open looks. Eight point lead for Queensboro right now. Well, and what is Queensboro doing so well that they've been able to take the they lead? They got out on the outside shooters and not letting them take those three point shots. Three point shots just kill you like that when they come one, two, rapid pace. Now you're going to build a nine point lead in a minute. No, you can't have that. Got to get out on them. They've thrown them a little off their pace, and it's worked. And they haven't been able to get those shots up so quickly, and they've had a struggle. But much better job on the defensive end by Queensboro. Well, and for BMCC, who was throwing up everything in the first eight minutes and connecting, he knew that eventually they would come down to earth, but it's they really would. been the polar opposite. But, you know, when you're going to get those shots, you're going to keep taking them and you get more confidence. And uh, Queensboro had to do something to get them out of it. And they have for the time being. Let's see where it goes from here. It's only, uh, it's only 414 left in the half now. So eight point lead for eight QCC. Point lead. Didn't take them much time to do that. Either come back from the deficit and then build their own lead. You figure a guy like this will, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to no, cut no. you off, John. A guy like this will have something to say about it. Humphreys try to set up his teammates. Amir Davis throws it to the wing. Here's Humphreys who tend to shoot down low. Offensive foul. That's the third charge drawn by QCC. And any coach will smile ear to ear when they've got a player that can draw a charge. Well, there's been three different players drawing charges yeah. for the Tigers. Well, you know, Humphreys made a very good pass, a good decision. He got it in low. They had everything going the way they wanted it. And he threw an elbow at the uh, backing in on the Queensboro Tiger. I don't think he had to do that, but uh, just a little misguided there. And that's the third person on Farkasen. And look at Amengo out there just uh, getting the wet spot down low. Too. He wants his players to keep going. Doesn't want him to cool down. Carl he has does to everything. He uh, he sells popcorn too. <laughs> He'll hand out lunches uh, during halftime of the women's game if he has to. He's a he's an upstanding guy, Carl. Beautiful family. Played at Baruch College and played here. Played here at Queensboro in his first two years. McIntosh snaps it down low as Williams can't finish. He just grabbed that ball on the ground, John. He, he has such a height advantage. He, he has to play a little more technically sound, though, Farquhar. And there was a hold. There was a lot of pushing going on over there. Yeah, the tight defense from Matthews has him pick up his second personal. Just don't want to pick up too many fouls. I mean, you don't mind them being aggressive, which they have been. That's the thing. Queensboro's been aggressive. They're getting up on them in their faces. They're not letting them uh, dictate the flow of the game like they were before. Dublin jumper? No. A little off. A little off. He had to stop short, and he had to make up his mind right there. Watson directing traffic off to McIntosh. Nice speed underneath. Williams gets fouled. Well, credit McIntosh for making that play. I mean, he, he made the pass even before he was there at the baseline. That's like a timing play, you know? And Forrest Williams will get two shots out of it. Like McIntosh, like what he does. Igniter. He's an igniter. He moves and uh, adds some life. Williams, a sophomore out of nearby Jamaica, went to Martin Van Buren High School. Very fine school. Queens has produced a lot of good basketball players, and it doesn't get the credit for doing it, by the way. Even the Catholic schools, Catholic League schools, 
they put them out one after the other. Right. Well, and if you're just going on Queens as a borough, obviously the Catholic League, Christ the King sticks out. Uh, Archbishop yeah. Malloy back yeah. in the day. The public school side, obviously down the block, Ron but, McClario. But there have been some. There have been some public schools too that have done an outstanding job, like Bayside. Right. Look at that. Ooh. Mark Blair with the finish. Another Queens guy from Rosedale. And that was another great pass by McIntosh. McIntosh is uh, playing a Sonata right now at that guard position like Louis Carnesecca used to say. 12 point lead for Queensboro. Make it 10 after the bank shot from Amir Davis, the freshman out of Jersey City. The only thing is Louis didn't say it like that. He said, he's playing a Sonata. <laughs> I always loved it because Louie never had a voice left after the game. No. Or before the game. Yeah. <laughs> well, he always made the joke that he didn't speak a language, he spoke his own language. <laughs> Timeout taken by BMCC as bodies go sprawling to the deck. I uh, spent a few years at St. John's John and St. John's John and the greatest thrill I had was meeting Louie personally and having him say hello to me. I couldn't believe it. So, and Bob Shepard I met. 37-27. You know, just to piggyback off the, the Louie point, when I was a senior, I got my hands on Louie's biography. And I read it uh, in the summer. And then uh, St. John's did their annual Dribble for a Cure. And Karnaseka was there, and I was writing for the school newspaper. And I went up to him, and he couldn't have been a nicer guy. Spoke to him for probably 10, 15 minutes, and then ended up writing two pages in the torch, uh, the, the local St. John's newspaper. He's a wonderful but, guy. Yeah. yeah. And, I was, and a character. Oh, yeah. Oh. And I was bringing up some old stories to him. And uh, maybe I should have taken his advice. He said, uh, oh, you know so much about me. You should go into the CIA. There you go. And then... Maybe, but this is a little more fun. That one taken away. Leads to a run ahead. It's Wilson and a foul. Wow, ahead of the field almost, but not quite. And he almost had to uh, make an impact on that back portion there. And we, we're glad he didn't get hurt. But one, one quick story. First year for Brian Mahoney as coach. It, I know it didn't turn out the way he wanted it, but that guy's a class guy too, so... He, he could take it, believe me. Uh, he had played at Niagara in one of his early games when he just took over from Louis. We're at the yard in Buffalo. We play in Niagara. And uh, the Red Storm get down, the Red, Red Men at the time, get down by about 20 points, 22 points, make a terrific comeback in the second half and win the game. And Louis gets on the phone with somebody and says, let me talk to Lazarus. <laughs> Well, to be fair, too, St. John's couldn't beat Niagara back in those days. Either. No, they couldn't. Bank shot goes in for Fleming. Even after they had Calvin Murphy. You know, so that, that was Louie, though. And uh, I had the great honor of, of voicing the uh, St. John's uh, video that had been up for many years. Humphreys, wide open three. Yeah. Book it. Whoa. He was so wide open on that, John, you said it's got to go. That one has to go. I'm sorry he did that, but I got to give credit to the other team, too. I don't want to be a homer. Well, he had so much time, he could have gone outside, <laughs> got a snack, and then <laughs> hit the shot. There's another wide open three, in and out. And Queensboro, it, one, and one, one and done. It was a good video, and I enjoyed doing it, but you're not, you know, the parts with Louie are the ones that I get such a kick out of. I mean... I put the sweaters in the closet and I wasn't going to wear them. Then I put it on and we went in games. <laughs> it's just terrific. Meanwhile, we've got a pretty good ball game here. Five second differential between game and shot clock. Here's Dublin with three to shoot. Dublin attacking the hole and he gets the layup. There you go. Five seconds to go for the Tigers. Boy, they closed it's that Watson. lead a little bit. Blair, and it's not going to go off in time, and that will do it. But Queensboro, after a timeout at the 12-minute mark, has come out soaring. They lead it by four. Yeah, but let, let's give credit to BMCC. They did a little bit of a mini comeback there, and they've 
knocked it to four. So, you know, John, I think we're going to see an outstanding second half, really. Uh, and hopefully uh, Queensboro plays the way they played in the middle portion of that first half. They were, they were doing everything. Should be a good second half. Uh, we'll resume in about 15 minutes or so. You watch a Queensboro and BMCC. Second half upcoming, Queensboro and BMCC, the home team with a four-point lead. That should be okay. a good half, John. I, I, uh, I'm actually looking forward to this. Well, BMCC thoroughly outplaying QCC in the first eight minutes. They called a timeout, and since then, Queensboro then returned the favor. But BMCC has been back, so it's been a game of runs, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how both of these teams respond in the second half. There's a hook shot and it goes for Mark Blair, picking up right where he left off. Blair had a good first half. He had a couple of big buckets and uh, starts up right away, as you said. Let's watch the defensive intensity displayed by the Tigers. Well, they didn't, they gave Humphrey a little room there. Well, if you give Humphreys any sort of room, he'll drill the three. Yeah. That's his fourth three, and he makes it a three-point contest. McIntosh, and a travel by Marcus Watson. Watson stumbled a little bit. He's making that move. They, you call it bobbling the feet. Uh, he never really got started. Well, a minute in, and we've seen a sizzling start already here. Or is it sizzling? And sometimes you say sizzle, sizzling. Oh, we know what you mean. Thank you. These scenes have been red hot. <laughs> Here's Dublin. Dublin, nice feed, but it's not finished by Fleming. Uh, you want to talk yeah. about a $10 million move, but a two-cent finish, and the three from McIntosh doesn't go. Unfortunately, McIntosh didn't even come close on that jumper. Dublin off on a three. Takes a tough spell. Wanted a call. Got the extra man up court, and they didn't pick it out right away. Mark Blair directing traffic. Here's Blair attacking the inside. Not that time. One and done for the Tigers. Double and the kick out to Humphreys. Don't leave him open. Misses the three, but there is Adams. But Sean Adams didn't play that much in the first half considering he picked up three personal fouls. Sat for the final 10 minutes of the contest. Well, he's got some height and he elevated up there. He's a little spry with those, uh, he's got thin legs and they're long. Meanwhile, Williams drains the three. So Queensboro extends the lead again to four. In the post, it's Adams. The turnaround. Hook shot won't go. Ball tapped around. Last touch by the Panthers, and it'll be Tigers basketball. Yeah, I thought that hit Adams on the way out. Floating shot doesn't go for McIntosh. A little teardrop shot that ended up short. Dublin, the reverse layup. Dublin going to the left hand, going to the other side of the basket, showing us a very fine move there to make it a two point game. Here's Mark Blair. Three ball, Williams. Not that time, Humphrey skies for the rebound. Nothing inside for Queensboro right now. Everything outside. But how about Humphreys running the paint? We're tied at 43. Humphreys has been a major factor in this game. He must have about 12 points, John. Ties it at 43, led the comeback. Meanwhile, down low is Matthews. 
And finally they went inside. And, you know, it's been quite a while since they got the ball down there. Turns into something good. Two-point lead. Matthews, the player who averages 12 points a game, but has been struggling as of late. Good to see him get on the board. Here's Humphreys. Pull up Jay. Short. And that's the fourth personal foul on a Sean Adams. That's right, and that becomes an even bigger play for Queensboro on the pull off of that rebound, which was battled for. And Marcus Watson went up and got it, and now he's going to have to sit on the bench. Yeah, he's going to sit for a long time, and you know, when you take out a 6 6 body that can protect the rim. You see right there what it can do. And Queensboro will attack more inside now. It was that inside basket that got him started again, John, because when they score, obviously, they can play very intense on the defensive end. It almost translates into better defense, and Humphreys gets ticketed here. Yeah, use that offhand to create some separation, and that's his second. But that major defense started up again where the guards are almost banging bodies with the BMCC team. And obviously that's the way they have to play them for the duration of this game. You don't want to give them any room. Back to the basket, Matthews now accelerating, fall away, jumper pure. Tell you what, BMCC may need a timeout very shortly. Here's Dublin, and a foul on the floor. It's before the shot. That's the second personal on McIntosh. Mac McIntosh very combative, playing him very close. And a foul before the inbound. That's another foul on McIntosh, I believe. No, Williams, sorry. Yep. His first team second. And the Queens extends their guards out. And got a nice shot there. Yeah, Dublin can shoot it from downtown. First team all region at Cuniac Community College Tournament MVP from a year ago. Well, he does it all. I mean, he shoots, he handles the ball, he can drive. He's shown us some nice moves. Three-point game. Really shoots the ball well, though. Fall away jumper short from Watson. Rebound Farkasen, and then a foul. And that's another foul on Ravon Forrest Williams, his second. Team's third of the half. Justin Wilson comes back in for the Tigers as he replaces Forrest Williams. <laughs> to the inside offensive foul. Dublin. That's the fourth charge drawn by Queensboro. Well, and how many times do you hear coaches lament to their players, draw a charge, draw a charge? Yeah, you, 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 that body contact, uh, it'll cause uh, the other player to drive into you. What a nice pass. Blair, not that time. Pulled back by Dublin. Dublin snaps the pass to Amir Davis who finishes. Once again, Dublin taking a little charge of this game, which he did earlier, showing us his immense talent as you spoke about. And Davis has come alive as of late, averaging north of 10 and a half points a game over his last three games. Justin Wilson too strong on a three. And the roll goes Justin Wilson. 
You know what you learn, John, in the course of any game against any team like the Borough of Manhattan, you learn you have to play an entire game against them, and that's what Queensboro is understanding right now. Four-point play, Keyson McIntosh. As that foul is going to go to Dublin. For Dublin, that's his second, but how about McIntosh yeah. hoisting a three, hitting with the foul. And that puts the home team, Queensboro, back in front, 52 to 50. McIntosh, an 85% free throw shooter, misses the free throw, but he's been shooting 63% from downtown over his last three games. And he continues to play at that pace this evening. Thrown back out to Jamel Jackson. Touch pass, Jackson, wing three, no. Good ball movement, but no bucket. 52 to 50. Humphreys. And a blocking foul will be charged to Marcus Watson. Yeah, a question of how that was gonna go. And uh, Humphreys, another very strong drive. He'll go to the line. You like these guys like Humphrey. I mean, they turn up at every key portion of the game, John. They they uh, see a lead getting away. They come to the forefront. They're going to wipe up a wet spot there because there was quite an impact with players hitting that floor. So basically, it's been Dublin and Humphreys who have been leading them back in this little charge here. I'm really interested to see BMCC come tournament time, and I, I, I would salivate at the opportunity to see another matchup between these two uh, come tournament time. And again, the, they're going to have to leave it on the floor if they're going to win it. I mean, you know, uh, BMCC was up there, as I said, uh, I went to like number six ranking at one time. So, all right, they lost a real good player. And uh, I don't know. I don't think he's going to be back. Well, no. And, and also, how about the fact that they're playing without a Sean Adams? They're starting. And center he's on the he's bench now. Personal. Foul trouble. But uh, Terrell is a good player for them, Fullerton, and they, they really miss him. But you know, sometimes it opens up time for another guy. This is a good team, obviously. There's a foul going the other way now. The on that fifth, call. The fifth offensive foul for BMCC. And yeah, you mentioned the, the talent. BMCC's had some talent recently over the years. Kenneth Kaur was a good player. Yeah, for them. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You also have Jericho Charisma, who was a double double machine. They came in here a few years ago with Kaur. Queensboro gave him a heck of a game. That was a couple of twisting moves there. Yeah, Blair completes the up and under. He's had a very good game, Blair. Blair has been Carl Domingo's Mr. In-Between. He's done whatever it takes tonight, but a drive to the basket, and we have another foul. Yeah, and Elijah Smith will go to the line. Well, it's interesting because you can make the case that some of these Queensboro players could be a primary scoring option for teams in the in the four-year uh, conference in the CUNYAC, but yet they play with such synergy at this level that they're going to be a tough out come postseason time. They are. They are. And you know what you like? A lot of their players are interchangeable the way they play. They play in a system, that's for sure. It's not like they go out there and just gun it. We've seen about four or five different players step up in this game for both teams, by the way. QCC dangling that one-point lead. Here's Jackson. Jackson, hop, step, he traveled. Well, when you hop and you step, you have to make sure that you're not on the ground still. And he did a little too much before he made that upward move. And BMCC with a chance to garner in the lead again. Wow, oh, how about Dublin with a hand in his face? 
That's got to be muscle memory at that point, right? Because there's uh, no he, way he saw the hoop. He, he practices those, and he doesn't worry who's on him either. No good there. What do we have? We have a Tiger foul on this. I agree with you 100%. He didn't see the basket on that shot, uh, Dublin. A foul on Jackson. Timeout taken by the Tigers. It'll be a full timeout. 10-21 to go in the second half. A 56-54 lead for the Panthers. And, uh, Joe, right. this is a game that you and I could have predicted and saw coming. And it's hey, really I, up I to would it. say this is one of the better games in the area tonight, the way it's been <laughs> played. And it's... Uh, it's entertaining everybody. Everybody's getting a thrill out of it, and it's close. 10-21 to go. Still a two-point lead for the guests here. The lead has changed hands a few times here in the second half, and you could kind of see that coming, the way these teams made runs at each other. But right now on that Queensboro bench has to be, uh, you know, fellas, we're going to reiterate this with you again because... Uh, you know, you're not going to beat this team if you don't play every minute the way you're playing it now. You got to keep the, uh, you know, the medal to the pedal or the pedal to the medal or whatever they do. <laughs> so that's what's, that's how it's got to be. And you have to take timeouts every now and then and reassess it. Because, you know, they had BMCC in a hole a few times, and they've come back. And BMCC has the ball right now with a two-point lead. And it's been night and day in terms of foul calls in the second half. Way more foul calls than the first half. And that ball was knocked up in the air off the inbound, and Queensboro garnered it in. Blair. And now it's Watson. Thirteen to shoot. Underneath, it's Sam Johnson. Beautiful working of the offense there by the Tigers. We went on the back door, and Watson was by himself. Got to get up. All these guards can pretty much shoot the ball. All of them out there. Especially this guy Humphreys. He yep. defers, and it's taken away. I thought they hurried the pass on that. Bounce up top and Watson will slow it down. The way they worked it last time, boy, that was a thing of beauty. Eight to shoot, Watson tries to zip a pass underneath. But here come the Panthers. All the way to the hole, that won't go for Amir Davis. Yeah, when you realize you don't have the break, you got to go back out with it, and they did, but blocked. Justin Wilson is blocked, and we'll get a substitution for the Panthers as Rayvon Fleming checks back in. Boy, this game's being played at break breakneck speed, if I can say it. 8.55 to go. It's such a fast speed that you can't say it. And the people are going back and forth from one end to the other. Thank you for that, John. It's like, uh, remember that episode in Seinfeld where they meet the um, the ball girl at the U.S. Open? <laughs> but they show the scene, it's just George and Jerry going left and right and left and right. That's what it's like. That's the way this game is going. And if, and if, and if you're sitting down there in the first, second row, third row, you're really seeing it zoom by you. <laughs> I believe that was Marley Madlin, right? Was I think the actress? so, yes. Because she was a lip reader. Right, same episode in my yeah, lip okay. reader. <laughs> Anywho, 56 56, 840 to go in the second hey, half. Uh, talk about our friend David again. <laughs> right. There was a turnover by Queensboro. I was telling him about the, he likes the odd couple, but he likes the movie The Odd Couple. But I was telling him about the TV show, and Felix was afraid to fly in planes. And Oscar was sitting on the plane when he was, look, look, there's a problem with the plane. Look at that guy. I read lips. Frederick, I much fear there's a problem with the future lodge. <laughs> I'll get back to it in a moment. Taken away. Oh. Nice save. Acrobatic oh. play. 
as Matthews is able to finish, but how about the job of Marcus Watson to keep it alive? Can you say tightrope? 58-56. Humphreys, not that time, offensive board, Fleming through traffic. What a, what a strong play he made, tying it at 58. So he said, I can read lips, look what he's saying. I much fear there's trouble in the fuselage, Frederick. And he goes, wait a minute, wait a minute, I could read them too. So he said, what is he saying? He's going, I much read there's some nut trying to read your lips. <laughs> 58-58. But if you tell David about that, he'll look it up on his phone right away and he'll get that one. Well, and David has also seen every episode of The Odd Couple probably a few hundred times. <laughs> Three ball doesn't go for Keyson McIntosh. Tried to be saved by Matthews. Tied up at 58. Oh, offensive foul. He That's ran going to go to him, Fleming, yeah. yeah. Like a bulldozer. Well, he made a strong play before, but a little too strong that time. Pull it back a little, big guy. He is strong. It's the seventh foul for BMCC. Both teams now in the bonus. And we simply have a ball game. Oh, yeah, yeah, David, the, the move of the odd couple, David loved the one where Felix is getting the attack of his, his uh, adenoids, and he's sitting at the table going, mm, mm, <laughs> and he goes, what are you doing? <laughs> Not that time for Blair. Bodies go to the floor. And a timeout taken by Queensboro. That one called by McIntosh. Perfect time to take the timeout. Tied at 58 with 7.06 to go. Where is this one going to go? We don't know. But, you know, David played that back for me because we looked it up on his phone. And, He's going, mm, mm, and Oscar's going, what are you doing? And everybody in the restaurant's looking at them, you know. So it, it's just like priceless stuff that you even get off that phone if you wanted to look it up. <laughs> 7.06 to go, tied at 58. BMCC looking to sweep the Tigers for the regular season as the Tigers do not want to lose on their home floor. No, they don't. And uh, this is, uh, you know, this is like a, a pace-setting game for them because they're going to go into the CUNY tournament. They want to have this on the win side of the ledger. Here, Tommy Guerin shedding some instructions to his team playing defense. Perfect inbound, but... He finally blew the whistle. I didn't think they were going to make a call on that. Yeah, that was Matthews going up, and we thought there was a foul right away. That's the fourth personal on Fleming. Well, he picked those up in a hurry, didn't he? His, his big bodies battering people around a little bit. These are big free throws here, tied at 58. Queensboro as a team shoots 66% from the free throw line. As Matthews himself a 65% shooter. One more free throw upcoming, short. So he did about a 65% job, but they got the rebound. Well, they 100% got the rebound. Here's Watson. Matthew steps into a jumper. He did something important there. He knocked down that little jumper there to make it a three-point game. That was the same Matthews who was at the line. Lots of time on the clock. BMCC knows that. Work a good play. As Dublin is able to finish. Well, swung around, it's Blair. Blair looked for contact, didn't get it, but still 
finish the basket. Well, he's a good nut and bolts player, Blair. He uh, he does what other people are not willing to do, which is get dirty. He made a real strong move there. Dublin, the step back. Karan Dublin heating up. Yeah, he's unstoppable when he gets going. Back to a one-point lead for the Tigers. McIntosh, a deep three, he hits it. Maybe a foot in front of his own bench. Well, this is about the best shooting I've seen in about a month from basketball teams. They, they are both hitting. Fall away from Dublin off the mark. And it's thrown up ahead. Blair, nice feed to Watson who will go to the line. Working of the break, and they got Watson on the right side, the free man. They dumped him back the ball. He was a little behind, and he laid it up. He had a ways to go to get to the basket, too, and he drew the foul. That's the third personal foul on Alex Humphreys and the team's ninth as a timeout's taken by BMCC. But just how about the shooting display? Well, I'll tell you what. You wouldn't mind seeing this matchup in the final down at BMCC in front of a crowd, but... Always remember now that BMCC plays in their home arena. In front of their home fans. Yeah. Who, uh, that's always one of the the better attended CUNYAC finals. Yeah, you get a too. lot of people. And uh, it's in a confined space. It's loud in there. And uh, it would be a show, though. I think the people would really be enjoying it. And I think Zach Ifkovich, uh, uh, Zach Ifkovich would like it, too. Yeah. Different playing surface there too, right? Not the hardwood. It's a uh, yeah. I don't know that, exactly that what tartan, it is. That tartan surface uh, yeah. that um, they used to have it at uh, Houston before they uh, went to play in their new arena, and uh, it's just like a smooth basketball floor. Some people like it. Some people don't. They had it at York College also. Yep. 66, 62, 512 to go. Free throws out of this. And uh, I must say, the Tigers out executing BMCC over these last uh, couple of minutes. Everybody getting involved. Watson, a 69% free throw shooter, off on the first one. Keep an eye on a Sean Adams, number 24 in blue. He's got four personal fouls. Oh, this is a big time for him. As Humphreys gets the board, 0 for 2 for Watson. You know, Humphreys went and got that rebound. He didn't want Adams near the play. He said, you stay away. I mean, you might hit somebody. Now's the time where you'll see if Dublin and Humphreys can take control again. Well, Dublin short on the jumper as oh, McIntosh man. might McIntosh have jammed McIntosh his finger. Hurt, hurt. I think he jammed his wrist. I think he jammed his thumb. That's what he's. That really hurts, man. Yeah. Well, we already saw in the women's game uh, an injury there, and the men would also hate to have an injury. Unfortunately, I, I understand that she may not be back uh, for the uh, duration of the season, but we'll have to see. They'll have to get a report on that, a full report. So McIntosh will come off. McIntosh has played one heck of a game tonight. Well, they go on without him here, John. Three doesn't fall that time for Forrest Williams. Four and a half to play. Adams running the floor, loses it. Never had a clean handle on it. Blair, nice Euro step, but he can't finish. He just didn't have enough elevation to get all the way there. Meanwhile, Dublin off the mark. Rebound, Blair. 4.15 to play, and now the ball handling uh, stints for each team become magnified. Let's watch it. And a travel. You know, Blair was tr 
trying to get to the basket, just didn't have enough elevation to get where he wanted, and it came up short. Final four minutes to play. And you know, one thing too you hear coaches say is, if you get that separation, dunk the ball. I don't know if he had a chance to dunk it, but. And he didn't, ha he didn't have the yellow, he didn't have the right stride going there. Long rebound back out to Dublin. Fresh possession for the Panthers. They had a big rebound for the Panthers right now. Dublin splitting two defenders, and he finishes. It's a two-point game. Well, listen, you can't rest with Dublin and Humphreys on the court now. That team for BMCC. You hope they don't take charge of this game. Fall away, Jay is too long from Wilson. And Adams comes out of the pack. He'll bring it up the floor. Yeah, rid of the ball, big man, because you have to stay out of foul trouble. And now Humphreys. Off the screen. Puts it up, no good. Ball tapped around, Queensboro comes out of the pack. Didn't look like Humphrey had a good handle on that. Not one of his stronger moves tonight. Blair. And he gets taken away. Here's Davis, and Davis loses it. Tit for snatch right there, you know. I'll I'll grab it, you grab it, you grab it, I'll grab it. Timeout. So a timeout taken by Amengo to talk it over. We saw Keyshawn McIntosh behind his bench practicing catching passes. Yeah. Uh, as well, and he gave the coach the thumbs up, so we'll see if he gets put back in. Well, he can use the thumb, which yeah. is good. You know, John, you made uh, uh, a little... Uh, you, you gave that a little clarity because the ball went here, the ball went there, the ball went here, and then we said, what happened? And then you said, timeout. <laughs> because that happened so quickly. Uh, they both lost the ball. Who has the ball right now? Well, it'll be Queensboro ball. All right. With 22 to shoot. As they hold on to a two-point lead, 66-64, 216 uh, to go. And the fans jumping up in front of us on those two steals, they love that. They love the intensity being showed by the Tigers. And if you walk in the building, you see that Tiger on the wall and you see the eyes of the Tiger. They are intense eyes mm -hmm. on that Tiger on the wall here in the front of the gym. And that's the way the Tigers are, that's the way the Tigers are finally playing with that look of intensity. They didn't play like that for a few years. And Carl suffered through it, Carl Amengo. You have to be happy for him. All right, 2.16 to play. And Keesaw McIntosh back into the game for the Tigers. And he catches his first pass flawlessly. Oh! And that one off the finger, and that is the hurt hand. Yeah, so you yeah can that see had still something strong. to do with it. That's for sure. I don't think he wanted to get full into that mm -hmm. to grab it. But what happens in that case is he paddle arms it. A pat, you know, like a paddle ball uh, racket. Under two minutes to go, two point lead for the home team. Now he's got to guard Humphrey. Dublin, blocked. Outlet pass, Blair finishes. Wow, what a ball game, what a ball game. Minute 35 to go, and John's bringing it home here, John. And a four point lead, which seems like a, a huge, uh, Huge difference considering the way these two teams have played all evening. And Fleming powers through. Well, and he's, he's been doing that all night. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, the BMCC calls a timeout. Go ahead, please finish. Minute 20 to go. He's been doing that every chance he's gotten. He's picked up some fouls too, but a two-point game again. And now, John... If you're Queensboro, what do you go to here? What, what are you looking at with this half court set that they're going to be? They're going to be forced into a half court set here. 
because they're going to have to run the ball up if they don't want to be in one. But where do you go with the ball? Well, so the one thing that you can do, especially for BMCC, they have, they've committed 19 fouls, so one more foul would put Queensboro at the line uh, to shoot a definite two. So you've got that. Only a one-possession ball game with a minute 20 to go. And you got 30 on the shot right. clock. So Queensboro can bring this ball, you know, bring it down to 50 seconds, and I think you just have to play it out here. You just play it out, try to get a stop, and, and obviously and if there's see, an offensive rebound, possibly foul or just and, hold strong again. And probably see what comes open, what shapes up in those last maybe 10 seconds. Well, everybody has played well tonight, that's for sure. I mean, you might even go to Blair if you see he gets available somewhere. It's slowed down up top, and it's Watson, a zone shown from BMCC. It's a three, and it gets a shooter's roll. Rayvon Forrest Williams, a back-breaking three. BMCC's got to go, they trail by five. Humphreys, tough defense from McIntosh, then gets switched on to. Humphrey stops, puts it up, doesn't get the roll, rebound Williams. And BMCC is going foul. to have to foul, and they do. Well, there's where they went with the ball, John, and he came through. That's Big the fifth shot. personal foul on Fleming and Watson with an opportunity to ice the game. Has Forrest Williams hit a bigger shot this year? No. <laughs> and how about just getting the shooter's roll, too? 71-66. But he really had the eye on getting it up. It wasn't like he hesitated. It wasn't like he wasn't certain that he was going to shoot it. And you got to give him credit for that, and he did get a nice roll. And then Humphreys, he didn't do so well coming down here the other way. I kind of forced things. He had to. And it's a five-point game, and Queensboro gets two shots out of this. And they could almost uh, make this a very, very difficult proposition. I was going to say put it in the bank, but you don't do that. Not with a three-point shot available. First one, no good. Well, the free throw here would still make it a six-point game, still two possessions, and a 12.7 second differential between game and shot clock. And the way BMCC can shoot the ball, this game's not over. So uh, if he makes this one, it gets more difficult, that's for sure. So now a six-point game as Watson gets the free throw and aggressive defense from the Tigers. Now you want to remember now not to foul in three-point range. Don't foul him. Dublin lets it go, can't hit it. Ball tapped around, Adams steps out of, bounds. out of bounds. He's out of bounds, wow. He, he didn't see where he was, he was never on the court. Well, it goes right back and they have new life. 28.9, it'll be inbound, and here's John. He didn't see where he was, John. No, and costly turnover. Marcus Watson. He's played a good ball game tonight. Thrown into Adams. Catch and shoot is good. Now a four-point game. Watson is fouled. 26 seconds to go. Well, it's going to take a remarkable set of circumstances for them to get back at a tie in this game. It's 72 to 68. If you make this one, it's a five point game. If you make the next one six, and then you gotta go right back, try to steal the ball after you hit a three, so. Off on the first one. It's still a four point game. Now BMCC gets the rebound. They got to get that ball up court. They cannot lollygag in any sense. And they don't necessarily need a three. Now they do. And the game is still attainable, but like I said, they're going to have to do a tremendous job here. Here's Dublin. Dublin with 21, has to give it up, Adams. Adams inside, can't get the roll. Rebound, Queensboro. 
Mark Blair securing the rebound and a chance to put the game on ice. I don't know why Adams was trying to get a two-point shot there. I think he felt maybe somebody was going to hit him and he'd get the foul on top of it, but I don't think the two-pointer does you as well, so we'll see. He could have also been thinking that since there were no options to kick it out to, just try and get two points any way you can. Yeah, yeah. Tough situation no matter how you shape it up, and it looks like Queensboro's going to hold on in maybe their biggest game of the year here at home. Offensive rebound to the Tigers, and more free throws upcoming. Oh, it's wonderful that you were able to cover this tonight, too, and uh, make it uh, stand out for the, uh, for the fans here at Queensboro and on the YouTube. 74 to 68, and he'll go right back to the line. And you know what? These free throws can put it away. Short on the first one. As it is, if BMCC if they even misses this one, BMCC's got to rush the ball up if they get the rebound. Second free throw is good. 14.2 seconds to go and a seven-point lead for Queensboro. Humphreys throws it in. Ten seconds to go. All the way to the cup is Davis, and he gets the layup. Eight seconds remaining. Thrown in, and he gets fouled. Well, yeah. you had Mark Blair, who was trailing, and you didn't see Queensboro throw the home run pass. As that's the fourth personal on Karan Dublin. Well, if, if he makes two of these, there's no six-point shot, so ball game is in the book. Ball game's pretty much there anyway. I mean, ball game is over. <laughs> Wilson hits the first one. Next free throw will make it a three possession game. Garen signaling for a timeout after the make. Or I guess not. Yeah, now he gets it. He just, and this will be to advance the ball. Yeah. He doesn't want to give up in this one. It's a seven point game with seven seconds. So I don't think there's much they can really do. So that was the last timeout that they take. It'll be a full timeout, and, you know, barring a miracle, Queensboro is going to pick up the victory, move to 6-7 and seven in the CUNY Athletic Conference. But how can Queensboro ride the momentum of this shooting night going into the tournament? What do you like about the Tigers so Well, far? play with the same intensity. Obviously, uh, the coaching staff got through to them and let them know that this is a big game, fellas, and we got to play at our pro probably most intense game of the year. And they did. They had a big lead midway through that first half, and then they saw BMCC come back and take it out and then take the lead in the second half. You know, their confidence really could have wavered there in some way, but they didn't do it. They kept making plays. They kept uh, having uh, different guys step up, Blair, McIntosh, uh, and then the biggest shot of the night. <laughs> by Wilson so you know you, you 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 just I think everybody contributed Dublin with four seconds off on a three second chance three goes in and that will do it a four-point victory for Queensboro Ray at home. I'm sorry I'm sorry go no. ahead so Queensboro improves to 13 and 10 six and seven overall Meanwhile, the losing streak reaches six games for the Panthers. They go to 17 and seven, five and three in conference. Joe, your your closing thoughts. No, I was going to say that I, I said his name wrong, but Raven Forrest Williams had the biggest shot of the night. But you got to look at what Queensboro did. I think about four or five guys contributed to that win at different stages, and this is obviously a very big one for them. So that'll do it from here. For Joe Massey, this is John Perez saying so long from Queensboro as the Tigers take care of business over BMCC.